Hey guys, this is Kejido and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today we're going to cover another use case for using masks, but in this case it's going to be creating a paintbrush kind of a look, but with a texture for its color. So let's get to it. So to start off, I have this picture of a fence that I got off from cgtextures.com. And what I'm going to do is really just create sort of a paintbrush look on top of it. But instead of it just being a color or something like that, we're going to show how we can kind of swap out that image to be any type of texture that we want. Now, what's kind of interesting from a just intuitive point of view is that when you think of brushing, you think of, you know, drawing onto it to create sort of a, a look of paintbrush effect. But what we can also do is use custom brushes from websites like Brush Easy that can give us the shape of what the painting is going to be. And then by using a mask, we can control what that texture is going to be completely independent of how we created it. So the first step is going to be to take our background layer and create a new layer on top of it. And for now, we'll just uh, fill it with red just so that we can see its effect when we apply the mask. And to do that, I'm going to use the flood fill tool and select a red color, maybe a slightly darker red color. And now we can go down to the mask button and then say hide all. And what you'll notice is it created a layer called a mask and it's all black. So with the, the basic explanation of mask being that black completely blocks and makes whatever this layer is transparent. And when we add white, it's going to do the opposite. It's going to then allow you to see through and bring some of the red to come through. So now what we'll do is grab our brush. And what you can see is I have a sort of painterly look type of brush, which I got from Brush Easy. And since I have my mask set to black, what I want to do is paint white. And what that's going to do is now add sort of this look of allowing some of that red to come through. And this is fine. This is how uh, masks work in the basic form. And if we wanted to, notice how it's gray. So this doesn't look full red because of the fact that the gray is saying, I only want to allow some of the red to come through. We can actually adjust the mask contrast by using levels and by either making it more white, it'll allow more of the color through. Or if we make it more black, it'll allow less of the color through. So then you can see how you have a lot of control here in terms of how much of the layer underneath you want to have show through. Now, beyond just allowing a simple color to come through, we can also add some kind of texture to it. So if we were, for example, to take another brush, I'll take this free snow one, and then go back to the original red layer. So I'm not manipulating the mask anymore, but the actual image that I want to show through. And if I were to paint on that, then what you'll see now is that texture, that painted texture is only affecting what's coming through in that painted effect. So if I turn this off, we'll see none of the snow affected the wood part. It's only on there. So then essentially at this stage, what you have is a setup where you could replace that image with anything and it'll still fit within that sort of painted brush sort of look. So for a quick another example, you could take another texture like I did, I got from textures.com and you could, as long as you put it underneath that mask when you drag it in, it will now become the texture that's going to show through. So instead of the red with the snowflakes now, for example, it's a leopard pattern. Um, and at this stage, I could, um, you know, adjust that leopard pattern however I wanted to. I could, I could colorize it and make it, you know, sort of a, sort of a red, you know. And if I felt like not enough of the pattern itself was showing through, um, again, like I mentioned before, you could use levels and then adjust it just so that it got to the level of contrast or visibility that you're going for. But notice still preserving that original brush texture. So, and the brush texture is stamped on, right? Like it's, there's no painting involved or anything like that. So it kind of makes just that whole process a lot easier. Finally, what's also nice about masks is um, as a whole group that gets created, um, you can make copies of it. 
And so if, for example, I wanted one that had the red or the other that had the leopard, um, I kind of have that freedom to just move these around and treat them as groups, um, as if it's just a singular painted object. And kind of like how you saw, I replaced one image on top of another. They're very reusable, so they also add that level of flexibility. Anyway, that was just another quick example of a use of masks and the flexibility that they provide and how you can combine textures with custom brushes to create cool effects like this. Um, this particular example may not be something that you find a reason to use, but we're not really so much about why we would do something. This channel is much more just about answering the question of how would we do things. So that's it for me. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. And if you want updates on new content, feel free to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.